Welcome to Lion of Prophecy Television. Your host, Brandon Gallops, Carl Gallops. Glad that you've joined us today. Man, we've got a hot topic to speak of today uh, with you. It's, it's absolutely astounding the way technology is going and uh, uh, what the heart of man is trying to devise yeah. with this technology. I, I, I'm going to start in Genesis because I think this passage of Scripture is apropos to what we're going to discuss. But Brandon and I want to give a little disclaimer right up front. We are not opposed <laughs> to technology. <Yeah. laughs> we use it all the time. Every day. In fact, I'm kind of a techno geek, especially for a guy my age. I mean, I like all the latest fancy gadgets and I can, you know, I, I, every time I get a new Windows upgrade, I'm, I, I dig into the guts of it to find out how it works and how I can manipulate it. I love it. Technology, I use it in my ministry outreach. The show we're doing today is all done through technology. Some of it is older, like cameras and video, but now we've got the editing equipment computer and it's going to be uploaded to the internet. The whole world can see it. I mean, you know, so we're not those people. We're not a couple of old guys that sit around every time something new comes out. We say, that's of the devil. Yeah. You know, we, you know, most of it is. It is, yeah. But, uh, but that's not who we are. And so even when you get into the medical technology and the yeah. genetic splicing technology, listen, there's some really good, benevolent, Man. loving things that could come out of that. We'll talk about that in a moment. But oh my gosh, there is a floodgate of evil on the way. Yeah. And it's a Pandora's box. Yes, it is. And even people who are experimenting with this stuff. I mean, people who don't even know the Word of God, you know, they're just, they're just looking at what is. And they're writing in mainstream media or they're speaking, they're giving interviews and saying, you know, we're a little freaked out by where this can go. And we need world regulations. We need worldwide rules and a governing body. to. Be, first thing man thinks of, the solution is more law. Yeah. Well, the solution is the evil heart, right? That yeah. needs to be reformed because in the blood of Jesus because technology can get away from you. It's like nuclear technology. Look, nuclear technology is wonderful in the hands of nuclear medicine yeah. or nuclear energy, for example, but it's horrific when it's in the hands of terrorists right. as nuclear weapons. Yeah. And, and, and so it's a Pandora's box because one nation becomes nuclear powerful. Well, then another nation wants to make sure they're at least the same. That's right. If not more. Well, then once they come up to that standard, then the first nation says, well, now um, we got to one up that. And then in the meantime, other nations are saying, wait, we don't want to be left out. And before long, you have worldwide nuclear proliferation among nations, some of them who are mortal enemies with each other. That's right. And then you've got this whole other class of people called terrorists hmm. who are trying to get their hands on any nuclear weapon they can get for the purpose of destroying any and everybody in their path. There's an example of a Pandora's box of something that could be really, really good and is being used for good, nuclear energy, but is also one of the main nemesis of today's world. Yeah. Nuclear war. That's right. So now we come to another level of technology that people who've lived through the nuclear age are looking at and saying, okay, we've learned a lesson. Uh, do we really want to go down this road? The problem is we already have gone down We're the road. We're on the road, right. <laughs> we already know how to go down the road and no one's going to have the restraint to say, you know what, I see that door. Just because there's a door doesn't mean you should open it. That's right. I see that door and if I don't open it, somebody will, so I'm going to open it. That's where we are now. That's right. And I mean, we're just getting close, folks. We're living in such prophetic times. So let me just begin. Let's go all the way back to the garden. Genesis chapter 3 speaks of the serpent speaking to Eve. We know that that word serpent in English comes from the Hebrew nachash, which not only can mean a literal snake, but more importantly, it means a person or an entity, an individual who speaks magically, who enchants, who is a, who is a diviner, who is a, who is a slickster, a trickster. Um, that's what the word nachash means in that's Hebrew. Right. And so that's who came to the garden, not a talking snake, but Satan himself, Nachash, who came in all of his splendor and glory, his majesty, his beauty. And he says to Eve, did God really say? Hmm. 
See, everybody mm -hmm. talks about Eve committing the first sin in the garden. No, it was Nachash that committed the first sin in the garden. He called God a liar. First thing out of his mouth. Did God really say, you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman answers, and, you know, we shouldn't eat from it, et cetera, et cetera. And then Nachash says, but look, you will surely not die. For God knows that when you eat of the fruit of this tree, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God. In some, some translations, King James says, you'll be like the gods. You'll, yeah. you'll be like the divine realm. You'll be like God or like the gods, like the divine realm, knowing good and evil. And by the way, that word gods would be a little g, meaning angels and things like that, the demonic. That's right. <laughs> you know, it doesn't mean that there are a pantheon of equal gods. It right. just means you'll either be like the most high or you can at least have supernatural knowledge. That's right. That the angels have. That's, that's what that means, depending upon how you interpret that Hebrew word. So, so the bottom line is the word of God tells us that one of the first temptations to man was to have this superior knowledge. And, and what does it usually go? It goes to the manipulation of life. That's right. To the manipulation of humanity, mm -hmm. particularly. All life, but particularly humanity. The goal is always to yeah. manipulate humanity. So, so here yeah. we are. I'm going to let you, I'm going to toss it to you in a second for you to give some of the latest headlines and, and then we'll talk about the ramifications of it and what some of the long-range plans for the use of this technology are. But again, I just want to reiterate, um, some of the technology we're going to talk about as we begin talking about it, you might say, well, there's nothing wrong with that. That's wonderful. We agree. <laughs> there, there are a lot of wonderful things that can be done with these kinds of technologies. But if you have any spiritual discernment at all, you also will know the abject evil that can be accomplished. And as I said in the beginning of this, of this clip, um, people that are working on this see it too. And they're speaking about it. So it's not just a couple of guys on TV that are right. conspiracy theorists. I mean, the people who are working on this technology are saying there's a Pandora's box lying right in front of us. So yeah. talk to us about some of this technology. Yeah. Well, let me just start with a headline. Uh, this comes out of the Telegraph uh, UK. Again, m mainstream. Right. You know, very recognized name in the news world. And uh, the headline is this. Artificial, keyword. Artificial human life could soon be grown in lab after embryo breakthrough. And what do we say? What's always the goal? We start by manipulating animals and things lower down the food chain, right, if you right. will. But Plants, the ultimate GMOs. goal <laughs> is that's right, exactly. Right. The ultimate goal is always what? Humanity. Right. Why is that? Because God created us in his image. We are created in the in the image of the creator. We right. are the top of the chain, if you right. will just below you know, God in the, in the realm of the gods. Right. And so that, why, why is the goal to manipulate us? Well, it has been since the Garden of Eden. You just read it. Right. You, you just read it right out of God's Word. And that's just one headline of many. There, there are many other statements coming out of the industry about men merging with machines. Right. Uh, we're getting, transhumanism. Transhumanism. Yes. We, we're getting statements from industry leaders, uh, something like this. If man doesn't, if humanity doesn't merge with machines in the very near future, then we will be left behind. Right. That's a, that, that's a statement right. from leaders in the industry. But these same leaders, also like you just said, warn, we don't know where this is going to go. Right. But you need to do it or we're going right. to get left behind. But right. we have no idea what We've the consequences are. We've got to do it are. because somebody's going to do it. That's but, exactly right. But we also know it's a Pandora's box, but we're going to open it Listen, anyway. Listen, we know that governments and militaries have been experimenting with this technology for decades. Right. For decades, it started very simple. You take a little microchip of some sort and insert it into a soldier's body to keep track of them. Right. Well, you've just merged machinery with humanity. Right. At its most basic level. That's exactly right. But it's and really not even necessarily anything evil. That's right. About that. Right. No, no. I we need to keep track of our track of our soldiers. If a soldier, bless his heart, it gets blown up and. In, in, in some massive attack, then you want to be able to identify that body and to get it back to the loved That's ones. exactly and right. So the chip helps and it, all of that keeps them from being kidnapped and taken away into captivity without yeah. being able to take them prisoner. So it's good. But it's we're good. now literally but, decades beyond that technology. Yes, yes. Even though we're just hearing about it in the mainstream, we're, we're literally decades beyond that to where now we're literally talking about the merging of humanity and machines to where now there are, are computers and machines being created 
that can so far outpace the human mind and the ability to think and reason. To, right. You hear what I, the words I'm using? Right. To think and even reason. Yeah, no. And that's real technology. To, to develop a consciousness yes. is what they're working on And that's the way it's being advertised. In artificial intelligence. Yeah. Absolutely. No, they, that's the words they use. That, that's exactly right. So in these machines, they're real. They exist. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it's happening right now. And, and uh, the splicing of, of uh, animals and human genes, that's another thing ripped right out of the headlines. Mm -hmm. uh, three parent babies mm -hmm. ripped right out of the headlines. Mm -hmm. What does it have to do with God's Word? Every bit of it spits in the foundation of the creation. Yes. Of the world, marriage, home, family, gender identity, man and woman. That's children, exactly right. Childhood, everything. Cre created man and woman so that we could procreate as man and woman. There is not a a a, a animal or uh, you know not a species on this planet that can create outside of a male female relationship. Mm -hmm. That can procreate mm -hmm. outside of a male female relationship. That is why the attack is on humanity. That is why the the, the seeking to change humanity because it is spiritual in nature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, it is. It's absolutely spiritual in nature. And so you mentioned uh, gene splicing. And of course, the scientific technological term for that now is CRISPR-Cas9. And we've already done a program on that. I'm not going to yes. get into the scientific definition of all of that, except for the fact that what it is, it's a biological chemical mechanism that we have discovered uh, within DNA that's really, to put it in the simplest terms, it's a way of using the DNA elements, components, as a cut and splice cut and paste method of cutting and pasting certain parts of the DNA to cutting and pasting them into other parts of the DNA or into other DNA mm -hmm. and from one organism to another, from one species to another. And they're doing experiments in these things. Some of these experiments have failed miserably, but some have begun to uh, be successful. Right. Now, let's think about that. As soon as you hear that, you <laughs> probably think immediately, that's completely evil. Not necessarily. Right. There are some good things. For example, if you could take a hog and grow human liver and a human heart in it, then you, you save people's lives. That's right. You don't have to worry about heart and liver donors anymore. That's right. And after you take the heart and the liver from the hog, you can still have bacon. <laughs> I mean, it's a win-win for everybody except that's for right. the hog. Except for the pig. Yeah, but I mean, but, about but from time immemorial, that's why he's been here. That's right. Uh, you know, so so that's a win-win from the human standpoint. And you say, well, that's good. That's really cool. Never thought about that. Well, um, of course, we don't know the unknowns about a heart and a liver grown inside of a pig. What's going to the long-range effects? We don't know. Will the person start squealing? We don't. <laughs> Probably not. I'm just being funny. But you know, it's like anything else. When they invented cigarettes, they thought they were great. Yeah. They find out 50 years later, it's killing everybody. That's right. So we don't know. But as good as all that sounds, the abject evil that's already being planned with that half human, half animals. In fact, the people that. I've got quoted in, in this book, When the Lion Roars, right out of the technology websites, they are talking about how they said we could literally change the entire ecology of the planet That's through right. this technology. Well, what is that? That's We're going to be God of this planet. That's right. We're going we to decide. make this planet. We're going to recreate it in our image. Yeah. And we'll decide and what we want to what do. what was the temptation of Eve in the That's garden? Right. Do You'll you be want like to us. be like God? You want to know what we know. That's right. You want to know how to do what we do and what we know about. And mm -hmm. we want to know how to do what God can do. You want to be like God? Yeah, yeah. We, can, we, can, we can give you that. So anyway, so some of the latest technology, and we're almost out of time, but we're going to get right to this point. Some of the latest technology involves stem cell that you can take from two different people. You don't have to have the, the male sexual cell and the female sexual cell, the egg and the sperm. You don't have to have that anymore, according to these latest research scientists. They say, you just need a stem cell from one person and a stem cell from another person, and we can begin to grow the human embryo. They've already done it with mice. Yeah. They put them together, put them in a mixture and everything, and, and in an environment outside of a womb, no egg, no sperm, from, but from two different donors, they put these cells together, apply whatever application needs to be done in the processes, and the little embryo of the mouse began to grow. Yeah. And they said, this is the biggest breakthrough in embryonic science ever. And now they're, you know, they're not using these words, but it's like 
now we know what it likes. To, now we know what it feels like to be God. Right. That comes right out of the Frankenstein movie yeah. from decades ago. And there are and there are people in this in this this side of the tech industry that have made statements like that. I would that doubt we it. will merge with machines and then we will be God. Be, yeah. I, I mean that's a that's, that's true. A statement. I've read those statements. You, yes. you emailed me some of those yes. a few weeks back. But anyway, we're running out of time. So here's the deal. We're going to end with this kicker. Yeah. So you got a stem cell from one person and a stem cell from another person. You put them together and you can grow a baby. Now, they don't have it perfected yet, but they know that it can be done. Right. This is the latest technological breakthrough. So what is in the headlines yeah. being touted as one of the main uses for this technology in the day we live in? Yeah, uh, that now gay couples can have their own babies. Yeah. The radical their own homosexual babies. agenda. The DNA exactly. of a man and the DNA of another man, and you create stem your cell own from baby. one man, stem cell from DNA another man. The DNA of a woman, the DNA of another woman, you create your own baby. Yeah. And again, their it, image. it goes to the heart of everything in God's Word. Yeah. Of We're e close. the very foundation of the creation of the world. Yes. And folks, don't forget in Luke chapter 17, right mm -hmm. around verse 26, 27, 28, 29, right in there, Jesus said that the last days just before his return would be like it was in the days of Noah. Yeah. And just like it was in the days of Lot, mm. we don't have time. We've already done a show on all, what all that yeah. implies, but it implies this kind of stuff. That's right. The desire to know what God knows, the desire to put it together, the desire to step outside of sexual bounds, family boundaries, children boundaries, marriage boundaries, mm -hmm. and to manipulate all of that into our own image so we can run this earth. But behind it all is the spirit of Satan That's himself, right. Nakash. He's the one that wants to run the world. He'll just use humans as his puppets. So we're going to conclude this by just making you aware of what's happening in the world around you. We love technology. We are technology geeks. But we also know the Word of God, and we love the Lord, and we love His Word, and we know that we're living in very prophetic times. And a lot of this technology that has great benefits, we also know that even the technological gurus are saying, Oh my gosh, what have we opened here? And that's where we are, folks. So keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep yourself in this Word. Stay in the house of God among people of God. And uh, know that you're in the hands of the Lord. We have been raised up for such a time as this. Yes. God bless you. Thanks for watching another edition of Lion of Prophecy TV.